live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this scenario from last season. Let's say that the committee was determining whether or not to let Cincinnati in the playoff over Notre Dame, and they were trying to decide who should take on number one seed Alabama in the Cotton Bowl. The committee decides, and rightfully decides for that matter, that it should be Cincinnati. They've gone undefeated, they beat a couple of ranked opponents, and they beat Notre Dame on the road rather convincingly. So by just about every metric, they deserve the spot. And then, ESPN steps into the room and says, Under no circumstances are you to put Cincinnati in the playoff. Putting Cincy in will destroy the ratings, and we can't afford to have our TV ratings go down. Then, the committee complies, and leaves Cincinnati out of the playoff purely for television reasons. Something like that seems kind of insane, right? A team can do everything right, and be left out of a bowl game, and miss out on a giant payday and an opportunity, strictly because a television network interjects and says that they can't play in the game. Well, as crazy and as awful as this sounds, in 1983, this actually happened. SMU was an exceptional team, and they were supposed to play in the Fiesta Bowl as a reward for their great season. And NBC said to the Fiesta Bowl committee, I guess you better slow your Mustang down. Because as the TV network sponsoring this game, NBC could not take the chance of showing the Mustangs. This is the story behind this insane television interference, and one of the biggest bull selection controversies in NBC history. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand how SMU was playing, how their season was going, and what the landscape in college football was like to the point where SMU was denied the opportunity to play in a big bowl game. The year is 1983, and expectations could not be higher for the Mustangs. After finishing 5th in the AP poll in 1981, they followed that up with an undefeated season in 1982, where they went 11-0-1, spent the entire season inside the top 10, and defeated Pitt in the Cotton Bowl to finish 2nd in the AP poll, although some publications had them listed as a national champion. It was one of the best seasons, heck, maybe the best season in program history, and people expected them to do great things in 1983 to build off of that, even if they were losing their workhorse running back, Eric Dickerson, to the NFL. Sure enough, in 1983, under the guidance of head coach Bobby Collins, SMU was once again a really good team, steamrolling their competition and taking care of business in the games that they had to win. In their 11 regular season games, they went 10-1, with the lone loss being a 3-point loss to a number 2 ranked Texas team. Their defense was lights out, as not only did they shut out two opponents, including an Arkansas team on the road, but they had a four-game stretch from the end of October to the middle of November where they allowed seven points or less in each of those four games. With the exception of Baylor, not a single team put up more than 17 on the Mustangs. They allowed a mere 11.4 points per game, which was somehow better than what they did in 1982, and was an improvement on the 13.3 points per game they allowed that season. In fact, SNU had the fourth-best defense in all of college football, as the only teams to allow fewer points per game over the course of the year were Virginia Tech, Texas, and Miami. SMU was that good, and once again, was one of the top teams in all of college football. Surely nothing would stop them from continuing that dominance throughout the 80s, except for, I don't know, the death penalty. But that's another story for another time. Anyways, when it came time to picking the bowls, it was obvious that not only would SMU be going bowling, since they finished second in the conference, were ranked 6th in the AP poll, and only lost one game, but it was obvious that they would be getting a really, really good bowl. No, they wouldn't be able to go to the Cotton Bowl, because Texas won the Southwest Conference, so they got that spot. But they would get the next best thing, and would get a trip to the Fiesta Bowl down in Arizona at Sun Devil Stadium. The Fiesta Bowl was a really big deal, because not only was this a New Year's Day Bowl, or I guess January 2nd since January 1st fell on a Sunday that year, and thus no bowl games were held on that day, but because this game paid out $850,000 to each of their participants, making it one of the biggest bowl payouts of the entire calendar. It actually made it the fifth highest payout, and here's a nice list of each of the bowl games from that season and how much they paid, with the Fiesta Bowl being comfortably in the top five, and no other bowl game coming even close to them. Notice how the Sun Bowl paid out significantly less than that, 
as in more than 50% less what the Fiesta Bowl was paying out. This is what we call foreshadowing. As a side note, to learn more about the Sun Bowl, click the card in the upper right corner. However, when it came time for the Bowls to be announced, even though SMU was hoping for the Fiesta Bowl, and to some extent was even expecting the Fiesta Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl decided to look the other way. Instead, they chose the number 14 ranked Ohio State Buckeyes and the number 15 ranked Pittsburgh Panthers, both of whom were significantly lower in the rankings than SMU was. This seems kind of odd, doesn't it? Why is a one-loss, top 10 ranked SMU team being shut out of this game, while a three-loss Ohio State team and a Pitt team that lost two games and tied one are playing? Turns out, it had everything to do with the television networks and with money. Because NBC stepped in and said to the Fiesta Bowl, We didn't pay all this money to televise the game for you to put SMU in it. And the reason why NBC felt this way and blocked SMU from playing in the bowl game with a significantly higher payout that they, quite frankly, deserve to play in? Prepare yourselves for one of the most frustrating examples in bowl history of how greed, television, and the almighty dollar prevailed over what was fair and just and right. One of the beauties with the Fiesta Bowl was that it was a New Year's Day game, or in this case, a January 2nd game, which is always the best spot for any bowl game to be in. However, as much of a blessing as that was that the Fiesta Bowl, in its short history, had worked its way up to being a marquee game, it was also somewhat of a curse, because it meant that it had competition from other games at that same time slot. And competing against the Fiesta Bowl to kick off the new year, starting at the exact same time, was the Cotton Bowl. Now, Texas got the invite to the Cotton Bowl against Georgia by virtue of winning the Southwest Conference, so this posed a massive dilemma for NBC, who was televising the Fiesta Bowl. And you might be able to see where the problem comes in. On one hand, SMU absolutely deserves it. They're one of the best teams in college football. They have one of the best defenses in college football. Their only loss was a close game against the conference champion that went undefeated and was playing for a shot at the national championship, or at least a share of it. On the other hand, where does SMU play their games? They play in Dallas, in the same state as the Longhorns, and less than three hours away from the Longhorns at their campus. For all intents and purposes, Dallas and Austin share the same market. Who is the more popular team, SMU or Texas? That one's obvious. It's Texas by a country mile. So if you put SMU in the Fiesta Bowl, you would be competing directly against Texas in the Cotton Bowl, which would lead to an absolute ratings disaster. It wouldn't impact the Cotton Bowl in the slightest bit. With a Fiesta Bowl, it would be awful. It's like when ESPN puts a women's college basketball game directly against the Super Bowl, which they do every year for some inexplicable reason. The Super Bowl ratings are not impacted by that at all. But the women's college basketball game? No one is watching that. Now, NBC said that having SMU in the Fiesta Bowl, if they earned the spot, didn't bother them at all. Tom Merritt, the sports information director for the network, said on the possibility that SMU might go directly against Texas, That doesn't bother me. I trust the Fiesta people to choose the best matchup possible, and if that involves SMU, so be it. However, even though that was NBC's message to the public, internally, they were telling the Fiesta Bowl, quite bluntly, don't you dare put SMU in this game. Even though NBC denied it, reports said that NBC told the Bowl that they shouldn't even consider inviting SMU to the game, because it would tank the ratings. And the Fiesta Bowl complied with NBC's request, which was more of a demand considering what they were paying to televise the game. Remember, NBC was in the second year of a three-year contract with the Fiesta Bowl, and the year before, in 1983, was a disappointing fourth in the Nielsen ratings amongst all the New Year's Day Bowl games. But just like that, SMU was playing in the Sun Bowl, purely because NBC was worried that by putting SMU in the Fiesta Bowl and competing directly against Texas, their ratings would plummet. And to say that SMU was furious about being snubbed, losing out on major exposure, losing out on a New Year's Day game, and losing out on a substantial payday simply because of television and network politics would be an understatement. Being a one-loss team and playing in El Paso at the Sun Bowl on Christmas Eve early in the bowl season, while teams way worse than you are playing on New Year's Day, just didn't sit well with the Mustangs at all, and understandably so. 
SMU Athletic Director Bob Hitch didn't even try to sugarcoat it, saying that the only reason that made sense for being snubbed from the Fiesta Bowl was because of television ratings. As Hitch said on the three-loss Ohio State team getting in over them, why else would they take a team ranked below us? Head coach Bobby Collins echoed that statement, saying if the television networks get to dictate who goes where, then I think it is time for the playoffs. He then added in a frustrated manner, and understandably so, tell me, what have we got to do to get into a big bowl? Tell us, and we'll do it. I try to explain it to my players, but it's hard because I don't understand it myself. To think they're going to be denied the chance to play in a major bowl because of politics and pressure from television people. Even the players were feeling ripped off about the whole thing, with their starting quarterback saying, I'm not fired up about going to El Paso. I believe we deserve better than that. And he wasn't the only one to feel that way. Defensive back friend Nichols said, El Paso, pitiful town. And tight end Ricky Bolden said, this team doesn't deserve this. We're talking about getting seriously shafted. And I could not find one rebuttal from NBC in the Fiesta Bowl where they explained their logic in keeping SMU out, even though they denied keeping them out for TV purposes. But this meant that SMU was getting a significantly worse game, significantly less exposure, and a significantly worse payout, roughly half a million dollars less, for something completely out of their control. Considering everyone's attitudes about the whole game and not wanting to be there in the first place, it's not too much of a surprise that Alabama curb stomped them in the Sun Bowl, defeating them 28-7 and putting a damper on what was another great season for the program. But for a team that had Fiesta Bowl aspirations, to be kept out not because of your play, but because of the almighty Peacock, had to be frustrating. Yes, television plays a huge part in college football today. Heck, we're seeing that right now with conference realignment, where college football is basically on the verge of becoming a bunch of super conferences ruled by either ESPN or Fox. But don't kid yourselves. Television has always interfered in how college football operates, and the networks have always had a say in who goes where. And look no further than what happened nearly 40 years ago with SMU. Because even though the Mustangs wholeheartedly deserved it in 1983, and I don't think a single soul would tell you or try to convince you otherwise, for reasons completely out of their control, that New Year's Day, SMU was not invited to the Fiesta. Get your official Jaguar Gary 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.